Salutations, I'm Ruby Mattis with this month's Talking Cookies. Today, we'll be talking cookies with Sydney Florio, an esteemed member of Skull and Bones' production of A Midsummer Night's Dream, and Bree Bolin, midweek update anchor and baker extraordinaire. Instead of my world-famous kitchen sink cookies, we'll be digging into Bree's bacon this time around, and I can't wait to see what she's baked for us. Oh, 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 bright ideas and an Oreo cookie. It's a bright idea to dunk it or to crunch it or... Today, we're talking cookies with Sydney Florio from Skull and Bones' production of A Midsummer Night's Dream. So, welcome to the show, Sydney. We're happy to have you here. Thank you for having me. No problem. Now, I don't know which is more fun, acting in front of hundreds of people or eating cookies, but today, we're going to go with the latter. This month's cookies were made by Midweek Update's very own Brie Boland. So, let's see what she made and how she made it. Traditional chocolate chip are all the ingredients. Start off this tasty treat. You preheat the oven to 350 degrees. Add two and a fourth cups of all-purpose flour and your other dry ingredients into a separate bowl. Use the two sticks of butter and mix the butter for 20 to 30 seconds in the mixing bowl. Then pour three-fourths cup granulated sugar into the mixing bowl with the butter. Then add a teaspoon of vanilla extract along with a cup of packed brown sugar. Don't forget to pour your dry ingredients in. Then, add two cups of semi-sweet chocolate morsels into the mixing bowl. Scoop them onto your cookie sheet and prepare them to go into your oven. Put them into the oven for 22 minutes and then come back later to make sure they are bronzy brown at the bottom. Then, scrape them off the tray, bring them over to your cookie tray, and then ta-da! Enjoy my delicious chocolate chip homemade cookies. Those look absolutely scrumptious. I can't wait to dig in. So let's go ahead and try some cookies. You first. Okay. <laughs> no, those are really far away. Okay. <laughs> All right. Cheers. They're really good. They're really good. All right. Yeah. Well, I mean, that answers my first question. What do you think? <laughs> They're really, really delicious. Just what I needed. I agree. I think these are absolutely amazing. Thank you, Brie, once again. And continuing on the topic of cookies, do you have a favorite type of cookie? And how do you like to eat your cookies, typically? Milk, no milk, stuff like that. My favorite cookies are probably chocolate chip cookies. And it depends on my mood. Sometimes I'll dunk in milk, sometimes not. All right. All right. Sounds good. And... Sometimes cookies are round. What else is round? The moon, which appears during the night. So let's talk about A Midsummer Night's Dream. Smooth, I know. So for starters, what's the show about? The show is kind of like a twisted love story, and it takes place between Athens and a mystical forest. So there's a lot of mischievous things going on in the forest, and it's just a really interesting show. It's fun. Fun. That's good. You know, the only thing I really know about it is that there's a dude with a donkey head, so I can't wait to see what else. And um, what's your part in the play? I play Lysander, and it's one of the lovers. There are four lovers. Oh. So it's, it switches, like, who I'm in love with. It's a whole, it's a whole love square. Right. Love square, love quadrilateral. Yes. Rhombus. Love trapezoid. Trapezoid. I like trapezoid, that shape. If you good will. shape, yes. <laughs> and what's it like preparing a play this year compared to last year? Well, last year we didn't even have a play, so it's awesome this year that we get to have one, and we get to have it in person with a full audience, which is really good compared to last year. We had nothing. We just had the musical, and even that was limited with people. Right, exactly. And um, do you have a favorite scene or moment from the play? My favorite scene is probably a fight scene. There's a fight scene between the four lovers where we're all fighting each other based off of who we're in love with, and it's just a really fun scene. There's like slapping and pushing, and it's just really fun to do. It's fun to slap and yes, to slap <laughs> and push. I mean, I guess that makes sense. You know, good like mm -hmm. anger management. You know, yeah, punching. it's acting. It's acting. Right, it's acting, of course. And what do you enjoy the most about being in Skull and Bones? My favorite thing about Skull and Bones is probably just the people and the relationships we have, because I've made some of my best friends through that club, and it's just so fun every day to stay after school and just work on a show together. 
Right, that sounds really sweet. You know, like similar to here in B&B, you kind of form like a family because you've exactly. been working with each other so long. That sounds so nice. And last but not least, when is the play and how can people buy tickets and how much do they cost? The play is next Friday and Saturday, the 19th and 20th. And you can buy tickets either by scanning the QR code on the posters that are around the school, or I believe you can go to the Skull and Bones Instagram account to buy. All right, nice. So you better buy those tickets. And thank you so much, Sydney, for talking cookies with me. It sounds like the play is going to be phenomenal, and I can't wait for everyone to see it. Make sure you buy those tickets. You won't want to miss out on an event like this. Thanks again to you, Sydney. Now let's kick it over to the next segment. A wise Muppet once said, C is for cookie. That's good enough for me. On that note, welcome Bree Boland from the Midweek Update and Baker of the Cookies that are much more than good enough for me. So let's chat about them. And first off, what have you baked for us today? I baked chocolate chip cookies and they aren't actually my own recipe. Wow. No, I'm just kidding. It's fine. I'm sure they're still <laughs> delicious. Um, and I can't wait to dig into them. And by not your own recipe, do you mean, like, did you follow a recipe or did you just take, like, a roll of Pillsbury dough and, like, stick it on a sheet? I follow the recipe. They are homemade, but they, I've, fo yeah, I followed a recipe, basically. Got it. Sounds good. You know, they create these recipes for a reason for us to, Bake them and then eat them on a talk show that yeah. talks about cookies. So let's eat said cookies. You first. <laughs> yep, and I'm gonna struggle to reach them again. <laughs> okay, almost there. Got it. Is it good? Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I hope you like it. You bake them. Of course I like my own cookies. <laughs> See, exactly. Um, well, is this your favorite type of cookie? Um, or does another one take the prize of top cookie? Yeah, these are my favorite cookie because I always make these all the time with my mom when, it, when it's like a rainy day. So. Nice. Nice rainy day tradition. Um, but enough about food. Let's talk about midweek update. What's your favorite part about hosting? Uh, my favorite part about hosting is just all the people that basically do it with me, like Maya, Sammy, and Giuseppe, and especially our producer, Hannah. They are, like, such a great group of people to be with, like, and everyone's always there if you, like, have an issue with something or if there's, like, trouble with anything. All right, that's a really sweet answer. <laughs> um... And I'm sure many viewers you recognize you from the midweek update as we were just talking about it. Um, but you also do a lot of behind the scenes work for BMB. So which do you prefer, behind the camera or do you like being in front of it and speaking to the masses, not the people, the masses? <laughs> it depends. Sometimes I like being behind the camera, but sometimes I like being in front of the camera. Like I like being some everyone always likes being the center of attention at some point and there are times yeah i want to be the center of attention <laughs> but um there are times i'm like i just don't want that much attention on me so i'll just stay behind the camera and just do all the background work right that makes sense i understand that um and as a sophomore your first year in bnb was definitely unique for lack of a better term so what's something important you took away from learning the bm basics aha uh -huh which the B in broadcasting for, it, it makes sense in my mind, um, during the pandemic. And how are you applying those skills to B&B this year? So last year, obviously, there weren't a lot of opportunities to do stuff, but I was able to do a lot of things because I came around, even when there were, like, no, like, specialty hours we needed to make up. And I learned from so many people like Hannah, Sean Petritus, um, Louis Saracini and like many of the uh, seniors that have graduated, how to like work a camera, and even I got and I got some opportunities to be on camera when some of the um, juniors weren't even on camera. So, right, and good on you. You know, took those opportunities when they were presented to you, and you know, you've grown so much in the span of only a year. So I can't wait to see what more you'll do. And thank you so much for joining me, Bree. Um, if you think her cookies are good, which they most definitely are. Her on-camera skills are even better, so you should definitely check her out on the Midweek Update. Subtle plug, I'm aware, but it is definitely well-deserved. And that will just about do it for us here this month. 
We'll see you in December when we talk cookies on location at the Holiday Bake Off, where I'm sure Brie will probably be behind one of the cameras. So thanks to my guests Sydney and Brie, make sure you see Midsummer Night Dream, and until next time, I shall leave you with this. A wise man once said there was never a problem that couldn't be solved with a few minutes of reflection and a plate of chocolate chip cookies. Wonder who could have said that. Now, we'll see you next time on Talking Cookies.